Indiana Jones, Indiana It's a podcast about Indiana Jones. Every movie, one minute at a time. Welcome back to the Indiana Jones Minute. This is the podcast where we examine the nature of loss and the possibilities of finding peace and happiness living in the present. I'm the Admiral, and I'm literally preparing to meet my maker. <laughs> I am Tom Taylor. <laughs> I'm Cheryl Christopher Butterbacon Porter. <laughs> and as you may have gathered from my introduction, I am extremely excited to welcome back the man who created, I think, the most fearsome... And I, I think a lot of people might also say the most handsome villain in Star Wars history. Uh, he's a brilliant artist, a wonderful human being, and an all-around cool guy. My maker, welcome, Chris Epi- uh, ah. Really? Ah. <laughs> ah. It was so good. I know. You're leaving so that in. You are, not, yes. you are not. <laughs> you are not deleting that. That one stays hey, but, in. Yeah. If only he could kill you twice. Yeah, and Pete. By the way, that's what happens when you do meet your maker. I know. Yeah. You get all tongue tied. Don't meet the heroes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, right his name is Chris gates. Eliopoulos, which I know yeah. everybody listening already knows. So it's no big deal. I, I, I want to go by Epitaph. Yeah, Epitaph. <laughs> With a big giant uh, at the end. <laughs> That was such a big buildup, and you just went right down. It was great. It was incredible. I want you to introduce me wherever I go from now on, Pete. Just as like long that. as I don't say the name. No, no, you have to just go. Gah. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a slightly different emotion each time, but all negative. <laughs> well, talking of slightly different emotions, today we're talking about minute twenty-eight. And minute 28 begins with Indy looking at a photo of Marcus discussing the mating habits of fish. And it ends with a Marlon Brando <laughs> cosplayer riding his motorcycle on the railroad platform. <laughs> oh, geez. Um, wow. Yeah, Indy's sitting at his desk and he's saying, oh, it was a real crummy year, hell of a year. Uh, and he's looking at pictures of his dad and Marcus, but he's got in his hands what I, I, I can't tell what it is. It's, it's, it's like a passport. It's got his picture in it. It's like a sort of leather bound or maybe fake leather bound like little thing with a young picture of him and some words and stuff. And he kind of. Yeah, just... he's, 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 he's he picks up a little leather book and he yeah. says brutal couple of years. I think it's his passport. I think it I says wondered... this passport. It says this. Pa- it is his passport. Oh, okay. it's just, it's I wonder. It's got a I void thought... on it. I what was if that... say, it's like voided out, huh? <laughs> yeah. Is oh, is that what that is? Okay. Yeah. I thought, what if that was Michaelson? <laughs> I can't believe like, I've read this thing like 5,000 times. Yeah. He's just like brutal couple of years. He, keeps, he can never get to chapter six or seven. I could easily assign more than chapters three and four at one time. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Especially because it's like a pamphlet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he also, if you look at his desk and this is, you know, it's, it's second two, you look at his mm-hmm. desk and you see that, that desk lamp kind of hovering over and that's some serious foreshadowing that looks exactly like a UFO, <laughs> exactly wow. like a UFO. It does. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, and um, be, and, and if, oh, go ahead, Jerry. Well, when you, when you, you, you see the picture of, of Henry and Marcus on the desk and if you look at the picture of henry senior he's it's kind of amazing he's gazing upwards and it's a great shot because he's clearly not connecting with you or he's not (laughs) connecting with indy like for the you know even in death marcus Mm -hmm. is or uh, you know henry is is permanently distracted (laughs) in death yeah, and like that. every every time Indy's looking at his dad, his dad is looking up at the corner, like the right hand <laughs> corner of the picture frame, as if there's like a grail secret, you know, buried in the picture frame. <laughs> a look of disgust on his face. Uh, he's just so upset he can't even bear to look at his son. I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I died. Now you're old. I'm not gonna look at you, <laughs> but it is kind of amazing. Sure, it's like yeah. he's he's the uh, he's like the ultimate Last Crusade fan collector because he's got these two images that are straight from the film Indiana Jones and the Last <laughs> Crusade. These are stills from the movie, like both. Well, Marcus how do you? And... Ha- 
how did he get that picture of Marcus on the train platform? Exactly. In a skinned room. Like, Maybe was Sala a... there with a camera? Yeah. Sala snapped a nice shot and then said, uh, oh, Mr. Brody. <laughs> I like thinking wow. it's that, uh, that time traveler who Indy beat up that was going to try to assassinate Hitler. And now he's just oh, trying right. to crawl around Indy <laughs> like, to get his revenge. Yeah. He went back in time again. He's got his iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. Is it me? Does 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 um, Harrison Ford just look like regarding Henry in this scene? <laughs> yeah, we were not, talking about yeah, that. Yeah, we're. T- it's not just you. Okay. It's not, yeah, <laughs> it's Harrison it's Ford also. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's just because he's wearing just like clothes. There's yeah. yeah, Indiana Jones about it. He looks like yeah. he just right. got off his job at uh, Blockbuster Video. <laughs> that yeah. like, light blue button down yeah. shirt. But even yeah. previously, when he was sitting in like his little white T shirt. Earlier in the movie, you know, when he was after he scrubbed down, he sort of like I was like, that doesn't look like Indiana Jones now. Yeah, like yeah, like, it's a little tricky. I don't know, you know, yeah. yeah, like he should have been. I don't know. I wonder if that was a decision that they made to say, okay, look, this guy is much older, and we're we're totally embracing this. You know, mm-hmm. it's been twenty years that this guy. Mm-hmm. You know, you're you're going to see some shots of the same old Indiana Jones, but. You know, we're we're not going to play that Roger Moore stuff where he's like, mm. you know, he's like sixty eight, yeah. but he's like running around and but you know, brutalizing, punching guys like he's you know twenty eight. Yeah, they're like, and, no, Indiana yeah. Jones is old and he looks different and he's uh, you know, he's he's mellowed out. But I, I think yeah. I feel like I keep saying this, but they don't do a lot with that because, like in this scene, he's you know sitting here looking at pictures of Marcus and his dad and people who have died. They're like clearly setting up this like the whole getting older theme you know mm-hmm. that that you know oh indy's you know he indy's in a in a in a, in a stupor he, he's in a slump he could use some more adventure excitement uh you know he's he's older people are passing out of his life he's at a point in life where life takes away more than it gives or whatever but they never like they never do much with that that's you know he meets his son i guess that fits with that theme but it's not uh i keep going back to star trek 2 they don't do it as well as star trek 2 does <laughs> with Kirk. I don't know. Well, they, what, they, what what uh, what Dean Charlie says is, we've seemed to have reached the age where life stops giving us things and starts taking them away, which um, I immediately, of course, thought. So, all right, in old age, life is Belloc. <laughs> Belloc is the patron saint of of aging. That's what it is, and and so you you wonder, like, so. You know, with that, I wonder if they threw that line in there on purpose. I mean, it's like because it's Indy, Indy is always having things taken from him. And mm. it's it's also, um, uh, you know, it's it's portrayed as that with those with that language, you know, mm-hmm. that that line here. He says, you know, uh, life now, now, now Belloc's dead. He's exploded and up in the heavens or hell, wherever he is. Mm. But here now we have life taking things from 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 us or from in yeah you know and, and he's looking at his two friends you know his dad and his best yeah. friend or men are and his job I think that's going. a horrible way to look at life like <laughs> it it, it's, <laughs> i mean he's he's not cherishing what life has given him and welcoming each new day as something you know new and a, a gift to be received he's just wallowing in the lo- in his loss right he's about to receive another half glass of booze but he's not lo- concentrating on that he's just thinking about everything he doesn't have it's not yeah, well, in the script, after he says that line, there's like a little aside in the script, and it says, pause, wow, bummer. Then they both snap out of it at the same time, Indy <laughs> bolting up to resume packing while Stanforth reaches for the wine. Oh, weird. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you saying bummer? somebody in this movie was said, wow, bummer? No, they didn't say it. They That was just the, the, the aside, like the oh, script was- direction. <laughs> oh, the script oh. was just yeah. saying. Yeah. That's funny. Gotcha. I mean, it, it could be said... <laughs> It could be said that this is sort of the down point where, like, for the movie itself, he's losing all this stuff, and then later on he gains, like, the next thing, right? So life yeah. is starting to give back to him. So maybe yeah. it's sort of the set in that whole, like, this is a, just the setup. It's it, it's laying pipe, as they say, uh, for the future. But still, it's sort of like, not for nothing, if you went into this movie without seeing any of the, of the other Indiana Jones movies, would you be like kind of creeped out that he was just staring at pictures of old men on his desk? <laughs> <laughs> He's just, right? I mean, like, I don't know. There's no context in this movie for what's going. I mean, I know yeah. that was the fun of like, Indi- like of Raiders was like, this was a mysterious guy. You didn't know anything about his past. Mm-hmm. 
And now we're in a movie where it's like throughout we're referencing everything that has happened before. And it, it smacks me of the last crusade. Let's explain everything all in one scene when the kid was 12 years <laughs> old with right. one giant exception. Yeah. There's no shorty. True. Yeah. Wow. Right. That's we a, don't see the kid wow. around. Like, where's he off to? Now? Yeah. Maybe well, he there's gonna be some you know, kid he... stuff in a deleted a deleted section of this. Oh scene gosh! Oh wow! Maybe up, which I think maybe... is actually pretty nice. Maybe he's outgrown his sober K. <laughs> I mean, shorty now would be what like like thirty five years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got better things. Maybe, maybe I feel like this huge. whole like Stanforth line is is very emblematic of Tom Taylor. Oh wait, what? to me, what? go on. <laughs> <laughs> this feels exactly like. Every time Tom is presented with something new, Tom sums it up with, I could be watching Raiders. Why isn't this Raiders? Why is Raiders gone? <laughs> or, or apparently I, Star Trek 2 does it better. <laughs> Star Trek 2 really does it better. Even though it's the second of six movie series, they deal with aging <laughs> better than this last one. <laughs> but yeah, there's a deleted section here now where... Uh, Stanforth says, I wish you'd met someone like Deirdre to help you through times like this. Oh. Or if you'd realized Damn. that when you did meet her. And Indy says, let's not tug on that thread right now. Okay, I'll pal? See. And then Stanforth holds up his hands and surrender, and he says, I'll drop it. And then he's, he looks at his watch and he says, good Lord, I've got to get home. Don and Maggie are driving Sposum et Familia up from the city for dinner, emergency family council meeting. And then it says, Indy, with a touch of envy, they're good kids. Ugh, wait, 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 wait. Thank God they cut that. <laughs> well, I, I, I agree with half of that. I feel like the first half of that wasn't bad, given that, mm -hmm. you know, it's an, like like I was just complaining that they set stuff up that, that they don't follow through with. But that would be a nice mm -hmm. kind of and not that I need it all like tied up with a bow and everything, but it would be nice to kind of introduce that, add that to his sort of old man longing you know, his uh, yeah. things are missing from my life and stuff. This is part of my ennui that I'm experiencing right now. And then have that resolved by the end. You know, he's not going to get Marcus and right. his dad back, but he can, he'll, he'll find Marion. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think that's a little heavy handed in the script, but I feel like we learn that Indy has been making some decisions that are leading him to this place of unhappiness rather than it's just. But wait a minute, wait, real quick, Pete, read that again. No, because the first part <laughs> he said, because he said, he said, it's too bad you don't have somebody like Deirdre or you didn't realize that. Or he says, or if you'd realized it when you did meet her. He's talking about Elsa. He might be. Like, it could be Wait. talking about Willie. He could be talking about Marion. <laughs> he could be talking about, you know, Jane. Or well, yeah. I used, it, What it sounds like is that, I mean, Deirdre's deed Charlie's wife. Yeah. Are you saying? Yeah. So you're saying yeah. that, like, Indy actually was either had some sort of re relationship with Dean Charlie's now wife and what happened is he let her go? <laughs> no. Not maybe, actually. No, 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 no what do you mean, she, maybe? She no, that's, that's a fair saying. Reading. No, yeah. that's not true at all. You're saying he's speaking metaphorically Deirdre when you yeah, did I mean, meet it could her. Be but, both. That's in the, but that's in the script. He's like, oh, no. I mean, basically, you dumped my now wife, and I'm thrilled that I have her because I have somebody to leave on, <laughs> lean no, on. No, he's saying you didn't meet your own what? You don't have a wife. You, don't have, you, did, you, you let whoever was going to be your wife go at some point. Well, this goes on. Like, there's more. Like, I'll, I'll <laughs> oh, skip God. most of it. But Dig then uh, Stanforth <laughs> says something I think is gorgeous. Uh, he says, you know, when you're young, you spend all your time thinking, who will I be? And for years, you're busy shouting at the world, this is who I am. But lately, I've been wondering, after I'm gone, who will they say I was? Ah. Wow. And that's then he walks great. out. Yeah. And then he walks out. Because yeah. he, has a, he has a wife to go home to. Yeah, and grandchildren. Yeah. And, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm going to say I'm sorry, and we can drop this, but that's a weird line about the Deirdre. <laughs> I don't think that's just a metaphorical thing. They're, they're, they're saying, you know, like the, these women go for Indy, and he has pick of the litter, but he never chooses them. That's why we see him in this big, beautiful house alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, he see, never winds like up about... with the with the woman he never chooses the woman is what that sounds like they're saying here's our character indiana jones ultimately yeah, boy, why is that weird chooses. though why is that why is that bothering you it it, it bothers me in this particular minute because it, it it sounds really strange like indy dumped 
Dean Charlie's wife, and now Dean <laughs> Charlie picked getting... her up. <laughs> where exactly? Read it again, Pete. I don't know where you're Read it at. again, Pete. Read it. I'm not nuts. <laughs> Go back to the tape. I'm not going out with those nuts. <laughs> and he goes to oh, his boy. desk and rifles through some papers. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Stanforth says, I wish you'd met someone like Deirdre. Like Deirdre. Like, this. like, like. Keep, keep yeah. going on. Or if you'd realized that when you did meet her. Yes. And, and when you like did meet her. Let's not tug on that thread right now. He's alluding to that. Uh, uh, That's what he's saying. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Every well, I mean, there's of Indiana Jones's mind is going to go to, to Marion when they hear that. Or Willie. Listen, listen, listen. They're talking about t- tugging on threads. I don't know. <laughs> and he says, please don't bring that up. Let's drop it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Anyway. Hey, listen. Yeah. So we I mean, have. <laughs> it's the theme have... of this movie is supposed to be that he's all alone now, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the whole yeah. point. He's, like, he's got nobody. He's made bad choices, but he just always one bad choice. Yeah, you know. No, he's made one very good choice. If you like Art Deco, that uh, ceiling lamp is absolutely (laughs) gorgeous. Amazing. (laughs) See, I don't want to let go of the idea that this is Danforth's house. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, no. Stanforth. Stanforth. I see. I thought no. That looks like it was straight out of Donovan's house. I think he stole it from Donovan's house. I Mm. think he actually probably met Deirdre at Stanforth's (laughs) house. (laughs) (laughs) That's our Indiana Jones scoundrel. He knows the secret way in. Yeah. (laughs) You were a wife. You knew what you were doing. (laughs) (laughs) Um, are we done with the house? Are we done with no, this scene? No, I, I, I was just going to okay. say this. The, the, so the scene, so we got both Indy and, and Dean Charlie are fired. He's looking mm-hmm. at his dead dad. He's looking at Marcus, who's now dead. And and what's what's interesting, it, you know, Charlie says uh, he's going to go get more booze. And then what's interesting is like it, they, they kind of show this picture, like, you know, the, the, the shot, like Indy thinks he's a failure. Right here. Like it actually, that's the thing. It's like Indy is somehow a failure, but then he's looking at his dad and the music all of a sudden turns in, you know, sort of inspirational, almost like it's uplifting. Mm. I don't know. Just something, Mm. something, something happens in Indy's brain right in that moment. It's all I'm saying. Well, I think he also, there's another line they cut out um, where Stanforth says, I, I, they're talking about, how Stanforth is talking about how he used to be young and good looking and stuff. And he says, I cut quite the dramatic figure. The regents were stunned into shamed silence. At least that's the way I'll tell it to the grandkids. And I feel like he's trying to justify how badly all this went down. Weird. Hmm. Yeah. Because he says emergency family meeting. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? That's what the emergency meeting is. Oh, he's probably going to tell him I, I lost my yeah, job. And we're I lost out. my job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For that, for, for, we're not getting the pool for that ass clown, Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mommy's special friend. Yeah, <laughs> you know, mommy. You know, kids, the gardener, <laughs> <laughs> uncle, uncle Henry. Indy. Yeah, <laughs> but see, he's even doing it with the, with this guy. Like, it's like. He does something nice for him. He's like, "Thanks, man. I'm out of here." Like yeah. he doesn't even hang stuff. around to help out his friends. Yeah, yeah. he does. No, he wonder, does uh... no wonder Mac betrays him. Like he yeah. doesn't treat <laughs> yeah. anybody well. No. And the other, and the other part they take out. He's Indy straightens his jacket, like uh, Stanford's jacket, as he's leaving. Ugh. Like a very motherly. No. <laughs> they really are trying to work this angle of converting him into henry senior you know yeah like there's moments Mm. throughout the entire movie where he's sort of becoming his father and they like to play that up but it's sort of like it doesn't always work well yeah it's a little too heavy-handed you know yeah Yeah. i think it is too but i'm curious who cut it i wonder if spielberg cut that or if harrison ford wanted that cut or how that ended Mm. up not in the film that's a good question because there's not a lot in this script that doesn't end up in the film like of that length and magnitude Mm. there's probably too much up front yeah, they wanted to start getting into action a little bit more. Yeah, they had to save room for the FBI stuff that doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff that go- doesn't go anywhere in this movie. Yes, there is. <laughs> wow. Here's the thing. Here's my like. You know what's funny is I, I went to go rewatch the movie because I haven't watched it in a number of years, and I actually didn't hate it as much as I used to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the problem I think I've discovered it with 
you come back at it unemotionally. I realized that this movie is a lot of plot and not much story. Mm -hmm. Like, so plot is like what happened. Story is like why it happens. And you sort of never sort of get the why, like, like, why does he just get up and go decide that he's going to go to Europe to teach or something? Like, yeah, there was no impetus. There was no reason. And when he gets like, I guess now we cut to the train. And as he's getting on the train, he we get the really sad music and he stops and looks around and kind of nods. And yeah. you get the impression that he's never, ever planning to come back to the United States. But that makes me wonder if he's he's guilty, perhaps, of more than we've been led to believe. Wow. <laughs> I can't come back yeah. here again. Because <laughs> he, he looks like he's going to cry. He looks really sad. He does. He's he's being drummed out of town, basically. He, he feels like, I guess. Although it's, it's kind of self-imposed, too. I don't know. Maybe. But I mean, it might be FBI-imposed. Well, I don't know. I mean, just because he lost his job there, I mean, I guess it's fine. It's like, you know, he needs a he needs a job somewhere. And I guess he feels like he can't do it here in the States anymore. Like <laughs> people go are watching him. Are on to him. Germany. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the noose is getting kind of close, kind of tight. <laughs> um, but what's exciting to me in this scene, we haven't seen this since Raiders of the Lost Ark. He's got his gray traveling hat. Oh, yeah. I love oh, wow. seeing that. Yeah. It's not yeah. Being, yeah. like in, in Last Crusade, he had a traveling hat, but we were kind of half convinced that it was just his regular Indiana Jones hat because uh-huh. it was yeah. the same color and everything. And I think it was the same hat. But now he's got a separate, different, completely different, non Indiana Jones traveling hat. And I like seeing that. Fedora? Yeah. It's probably called hmm. a fedora, not so much a traveling hat, but I call it a traveling, <laughs> traveling hat. hat. <laughs> do you think he has his Indiana Jones costume with him, or do you think he just left that behind at the house? Like, his, are his That's Indiana good... Jones days over? Yeah, like if he knows the stuff is going to follow him, thanks to uh, Stanforth doing his bidding in a few weeks or something, mm-hmm. does he keep it with him or does he wait for it to arrive later and just hope he doesn't need it? Yeah, <laughs> I feel like he's, wow. he's saying goodbye to his whole life. <laughs> no, he, 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 I, he is. He is. He like because, you know, first of all, I thought that that shot kind of called to mind the, the train station at its schedule. I thought that was hmm. kind of interesting. Yeah, hmm. it's not 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 exactly obviously, but just kind of how it pulls in and there's smoke stuff and around. But but he does he you know he he does stop and he, he like pays respects to something unseen. Mm-hmm. You know that's the nod. And I thought, what if what if the entire time, maybe he look maybe Shorty's there. <laughs> we just don't see him. I thought you'd like. He nods to him. He's off camera. Yeah, he no. just nods to him like goodbye, shorty. Goodbye, shorty. <laughs> You're not worth we sticking just... around for this time. Yeah. I don't know what to do. <laughs> and he says he kind of just it's like a, a very poignant. It's about as emotional as Indiana Jones gets. He pauses. Yeah. He looks it down. Is. Yeah. He gives a nod, and I'm like, there it is. He said goodbye to shorty. <laughs> and then he gets on the back, train shorty. yeah because <laughs> clearly shorty we always talked about this shorty goes back and becomes the ta at marshall yeah <laughs> <laughs> um i have an excellent question an excellent mm-hmm. question where is indiana jones going right now new york to new york but what he said, he yeah, says, i'm did... gonna go to new york to take a flight yeah to, and, and then to... take an overnight to london okay but what's throwing me and maybe this is a 50s thing or something but this is there's nothing. Com- he's like an like maybe maybe an hour from New York City, and so mm-hmm. it's freaking me out that he's on like such a train like train like a murder on the Orient Express kind of train, and not just like a well, commuter so, train. Well, I that's the because seats, the seats look to... like commuter train seats. They do, but I mean, did they just had they not gotten to like electric trains and stuff and things like that? It's by Connecticut. Then? Things are a little slower. No, it's, it's, I feel like. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like I live just outside of New York City. This is they take regular trains. It's not electric or anything like that. It's just really a train, train. Yeah, the well, I mean, I, I, are just, my, my dad took the train yeah. every. Uh, it was the New Haven line. I know that this isn't supposed to be New Haven, but it is New Haven. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like on Mad Men, I feel like they had like more modern looking trains. And it, it, it feels like he's taking a European trip across the country with on a train or something. I don't know. And it looks like a me. transcontinental railroad to me. <laughs> <laughs> he's taking it all the way from Pete's house to New yeah. York City. <laughs> he's taking exactly. <laughs> I agree with you, Tommy. Can... That's that's not a local train. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Stop it. I'm sorry I said anything. <laughs> you know what is weird about this train, though? The most shocking thing, maybe in the history of me doing this show with you guys, I, I'm like, okay, I'm going to look up this train on the Indiana Jones Wikipedia page, whatever, and there's no no entry for this train. 
I can tell you I, what the train is. But did you learn it from the Indiana Jones wiki? I bet you did. No, of course not. Shocking. I don't look at the Indiana Jones <laughs> okay. wiki, wiki. But yeah, tell me about the train. It's the uh, uh, the Essex steam train and riverboat. It's mm. uh, it's like a whole thing you can do in the Connecticut Valley. And according to this, um, this ran regular commuter service up through the 50s. Huh. Bum, bum, bum. Huh. <laughs> up until the, by the late 50s what and we saw that? weekday local service with the speed on the line down to 30 miles per hour hard times oh, fell wow. on the railroad and in 1961 it fell into bankruptcy should have gone electric I, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna call this plausible <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna call this plausible <laughs> well so this is this is this is what's interesting indiana jones here is saying goodbye to essentially everything his mm-hmm. life but he is there was this uplifting music and hey wait like I, I i'm just that moment he's looking at his the picture of his dad something clicked there maybe it was mm-hmm. the alcohol talking but he's <laughs> he's it's interesting it's it's a i i'm figuring out is like is he at the you know the nadir of his life here is that yeah. is that what is that what it's supposed to feel like yeah yeah, I think he's it is. sort of yeah. done in some way. He's alone. Yeah. He's he's, he's all yeah. well. He's, like, he's had his adventures and now he's alone. Yeah, and and moving to moving to Europe and moving to Europe. But then, yeah. to save the day, we suddenly get. <laughs> oh jeez! <laughs> well, before uh, that, we get these two uh, these two suits oh, yeah. who are like chasing him down. Who we don't yeah. see again in the sequence, do we? We don't see them anywhere on the train anymore. Not, no, not to skip don't. ahead or anything, but I'm skipping no, but ahead. I, we know that they get off. I guess so, yeah. But you know, you know they're bad guys. You know why? Why? Because they shove the into conductor a bad into the bad guy. The, yeah. They yeah. shove the poor conductor the bad into guy the always roof. bumps to somebody. Yeah. 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 Why I never. No respect. <laughs> and the poor conductor just kind of looks at him like, oh, guys. Yeah. You <laughs> communists? <laughs> why? <laughs> Both the bad G-men and Mutt emerge from the same dark miasma yeah yeah Yeah. and mutt is dressed like he i I said he's cosplaying he really is like he's dressed exactly like marlon brando in the wild one down to the like stitched cursive name on the on the breast of his jacket even his hat is cocked away that yep he had in the moment it was just like yeah i was wondering is he like the original star wars nerd like original movie nerd (laughs) I think if it's not Mutt, then then it's Spielberg. Spielberg yeah. is just such a movie nerd, and sometimes yeah. like this, it just you're like, what are you doing? Like, I, okay, you used a shot from David Lean and and Temple of Doom. That's cool. That's fine. I get it. Oh, okay, you did a kind of James Bondy thing with Temple. Okay, fine. You know, but something like this is like why? Like for the people who get this reference, who know the Wild Bunch, which I barely do. The wild one or the wild ones? Okay, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Don't even know the name. That's what I'm talking Very about. Different movie. <laughs> well, like you know, I've seen the poster. You know, I've seen like uh-huh. the, the image of Marlon Brando wearing exactly well, that's this. That's a good movie. So for the yeah. people who, but the, you know, the people who get that, they're like, oh, why, uh, why do you do that? W- w- how does this feed into this movie? And then for people who don't get, they're like, why is that guy dressed like that? Why is he wearing that hat? That's well, not see, cool. I think, I think, I think, I think it's intentional. I think Mutt's dressing up like his hero in a movie because he doesn't have an identity. Like, I think he's got this hard childhood and he's trying to find an identity. And he's like, I like this cool guy in this movie. But wouldn't he have I, that? I, like, even I make like, my own rules. I feel like the hat is what puts it over the top. Like that's what makes yeah. it the Marlon Brando yeah. image. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah so like, it, and, it, and by it the is. way, we don't it see is. that hat for the rest of the movie barely. Yeah. Like I think it's gone after like the next sequence. Well, yeah. that's the thing too, right? He's always concerned about his hair throughout the movie. He's always combing his <laughs> yeah. hair, but he wears a hat when you're introduced to him. Like <laughs> right. you would think he would not be wearing a hat. That's true. Yeah. Because it mm. messes it up. Yeah. That's a really good point. You know what's weird though? <laughs> I mean the the. What year did the no, Wild tell us Bunch what's weird. the the the, the, the Wild Bunch <laughs> came out and Wild One, it? Wild Bunch. Pardon, <laughs> the Wild One, the Wild Bunch. No, sorry, Wild, God damn you, Tommy. Wild Boys by Duran Duran. <laughs> <Who's> <laughs> in Wild Boys. <laughs> it came out in nineteen fifty three. This is nineteen fifty seven. I got yeah. it. Okay. Yep. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, well, it's, it's it's so weird why, and self conscious like, and, and awkward and I don't like. Why it. the choice of this? Yeah. Can I ask, like, why did he have to be a greaser? I'm I th- they're, fine they're with him cl- being a greaser, I think. They're but, clubbing but us why? over the head with this 50s stuff. Like, throughout the entire movie, it's sock hops and malts and Letterman jackets and hound dog. And, uh, and, and there's one of these guys, too. 
and Red Scare and all that. There's a lot of that. Yeah, they they on. are. I mean, yeah, I mean, whether right. you like it or not, that's what they're doing. I think that's maybe, fine. Maybe, I don't mind yeah. that. It's like, but if okay, you're following why the, not steep it in that? But if you're following the 50s B-movie formula, which they're trying to go for, why isn't it like the Letterman guy? Like the guy mm. in, you know, who's... Always like the, the 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 couple when the the saucers land and the and the the giant ants come out or whatever whatever the B movie is, they were always like a little guy in a Letterman jacket. Yeah. Why did he go the other way? Like like it's just mm. like is it just because that's the '50s stereotype that they were, you know? And to make somebody like I understand that you want to make him like a little bit more able to take care of himself. Like in a fist fight, and 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 I know a lot of people were like saying, was he being groomed to take over the franchise? And mm-hmm. um, you know, like he's the next step, but like it wasn't he wasn't very likable as a greaser, right? I, but right. I don't know no. what other, other what, what other stereotype you're going to use for somebody in the fifties. Well, he could, like you said, he could have been the jock in the letter jacket or something, and the he oh, could have been Biff made Tanner it less likable though. Well, Mutt, yeah, Mutt yeah, I, it, yeah. like I feel I, Mutt is a punk. Hmm. Like he's mm-hmm. a punk, like, you know, like, right. like a punk kid, you know, not, and I, you know, that that's what they're saying. Like this guy's a loud mouth, you know, punk. I think he's not. I think he wants to be like, I feel like, yeah, he's mm. so vulnerable in the next scene coming up that he's putting on an act because he's trying to find an identity. He's trying to look yeah. cool because his dad, well, left you know, him and his, I think what's you know, hard about that and maybe what fails is that's not endearing. Because yeah, maybe you're right there, right. Pete. You, you know, sure. Because we don't mm-hmm. fully believe like like Mud is a tough, and they, right. he he's right. halfway there. Like he's you know he's good in a fist fight, and 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 he you know he he can play along in the old ruckus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know he's good at that. But but if he is faking it or he doesn't have an identity, it's not. Uh, he doesn't really win you over through. His inse- you don't find his insecurities charming or his, vul- no, his vulnerabilities, yeah. uh, you know, sort of alluring. I felt like, like I'm going ju- jumping ahead a little bit because, you know, watching ahead a little bit. I feel like he is a little bit endearing in the next scene, but I feel like they kind of lose that later in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. But I think you're I, I think you're right that that. Yeah. If he is, I think you're right that he's trying to. Like he lost his dad and stuff. He's like he's he's got that kind of that that childhood where you would end up trying to be something, like trying mm-hmm. to be cool. And if you're trying to be cool, then you put on a leather jacket and you get a motorcycle and stuff. Yeah, and you're like, this was the coolest guy in movies in the last ten years. I'm gonna be this guy. Yeah. And then we get to have a motorcycle chase later. Yeah, yeah but he's also like obviously he worked at handling a blade. He learned how mm-hmm. to ride a motorcycle. So he's put some effort into this. Yeah. It wasn't just yeah. an overnight thing like this is yeah. what I'm going to be today. It's something he's been working on. But it's weird for a guy that was raised by Ox, who turns out to be, you know, another scholar. Like you would think he would have um, got, you know, turned out more like Indy or, mm. or his father. Like, you know, like it's weird that he just sort of went off the deep end. Like I know he was trying to be the anti because of his mother and later on. But it's like, I don't know. I don't know. Well, maybe he it, also like had visions of his dad of this big hero, like action hero, and then he he just wants to be more like that. He's like, I'm I'm running away from you, Ox. I want to be like my dad. But what Who if he like, know what if his about. father was like, say his father was a fighter pilot, right? Mm-hmm. Why you know, and maybe he wanted to become like a fighter jock, mm-hmm. and it didn't have to be this. He could still have the leather jacket, but it, that hair is just a nightmare. Like he could have <laughs> been just sort of a clean cut guy that could handle himself at a fight. Could could work machinery. He uh-huh. didn't have to be a greaser. Uh-huh. I, I would, I, I would have yeah. probably liked him more. Like he was looking up to his father. And then by the end, you just, he discovers that this other guy is actually his father and like everything he thought had changed. And I think that would make that scene at the wedding a little bit more like he could have been like, Oh, maybe I'm, this is who I'm supposed to be. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, yeah. I, I feel like the whole movie needed a couple extra rewrites. Oh, sure. But <laughs> Spielberg wanted to make West Side Story for decades. Yeah. You know I mean, I think this is his entree. Yeah. There's something fetishistic going on here with this uh, yeah. bike and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure, oh, I'm really? sure Lucas pulled this up too. Like he, he oh, sure. loved the 50s stuff. And... and again, I don't totally blame them for that. I think that, that mm-hmm. on paper, right. that should work. Well, mm-hmm. I, I feel like Mutt and Crystal Skull, like Mutt is the Jar Jar Binks of this. 
you know, of 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 Indiana Jones. It, well, maybe Willie. And but broad my, strokes, he's yeah. Yeah, I, I, and I'm, I'm saying gonna, I'm like, gonna disagree with that. What, well, I disagree too, but I'm, I think I I'm, think that when you talk about the movie, I think a lot of people call. Yeah, oh, I I'm, think I'm, the, the perception is that he's the yes, yeah. That's the what movie. I'm gonna say. Yeah. I'm proposing. I'm proposing. We're, we're saying what you're uh, saying for you, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, what you're interpreting. Jerry. Yeah. Maybe we we're have a a a a a mutt watch because you know he's. Yeah, let's have a mutt watch to see. We had a Marcus watch in Last Crusade. I propose mm-hmm. a mutt watch to see, is he treated unfairly? I think culturally, everybody came away in the last 10 years of like, mutt sucks. Mutt yeah. sucks. That guy yeah, sucks. Yeah. That, you know, all of it sucked. He ruined it, whatever. And maybe, maybe it's unfair. Even if we, we, we think, well, he's not great, but does he deserve, you know, all, you know, a Jar Jar Bink status? Maybe right. that's well, too I'm, far. like just watching this scene because I I don't have a great knowledge of the rest of the movie. I come away with the impression just you know preparing for this that he doesn't suck. I don't think he's great, but I don't think he sucked. Like I think he's much better than I had drawn him in my head after having seen it, you know, several years ago. Well, to be okay, so if, if this is going to be a real watch, I mean, in this minute we see him for about a second and a half, and it's just yeah. him yeah. driving out of the out of the miasma, yeah. as you say. And yeah, uh, I don't even know who he is yet. Yeah, but so I mean, but okay. So if our watch begins now, what do we think about him, Pete? You you're kind of into him, or you think he's okay mm-hmm. at least so far? I think he's okay. Yeah, I'm it's, I'm it's, just sort of like knee jerk turned off by like just the carbon copy of 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 the wild yeah. wild west one. boys one, one bunch. <laughs> the one. <laughs> Dirty dozen. Yeah, I I would say it's it's that's such an iconic image. It it, it leans too heavily on it. You've pulled yeah. a complete iconic image out. And and if you really want to make him as a guy who doesn't have an identity and so he stole Marlon Brando's, then 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 draw that a little bit harder later. Yeah. Somehow. But is, yeah. isn't it better that he, he's this rather than uh James Dean and Rebel Without a Cause? Oh, Which that would have been really rough. Been that too. Yeah. yeah. Chewing the scenery yeah. and everything and yeah. all the sure. angst and yeah. Yeah. That would have sucked. <laughs> <laughs> it almost looks Crit, like it's top secret yeah. or something. Like it looks like a gag. This guy dressed like this coming out. It does out look of like a gag. It does yeah. look yeah. like top secret. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, speaking it, it, of, it, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say for this one second, if you didn't know that he was in the movie, that you didn't know that he was starring in the movie, you would almost be like, oh, they're throwing in all the little throwbacks to the fifties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You yeah. see just yeah. a guy in a motorcycle. Oh, we're just seeing little things to like ground you in the yeah. years well, i mean yeah. you, you, as opposed to, you know, that's hysterical you well could almost <laughs> think that this guy is like i don't know gonna be like belloc or somebody <laughs> like you don't know yeah. if he's good or bad yeah or he might just have a telegram he, for dr jones or something yeah he could just have a te- <laughs> yeah they they give you a little bit more <laughs> ominous music than the telegram music but. that's true well he does follow the bad guys in who's to say that he wasn't their leader and, oh yeah like, go get him boys yeah you know, yeah go round him up <laughs> it could be. Now I want the guy from the day the Earth stood still to show up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, which guy? Up to Beretta, <laughs> the alien guy. Oh, the yeah. alien guy. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sure, why not? Yeah, just have Gort walking around, blowing stuff up. <laughs> well, speaking of All blowing right. stuff up, I, 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 yeah, yeah. I was gonna say oh. I want to talk more, mutt more, but we have a couple more minutes to. Oh yeah. Discuss, we'll, we'll, so. Oh, oh, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll mutt. Yeah. <laughs> um. This just in from Professor <laughs> Muddy Porter. <laughs> I went. The dog just looked up at me and ran away. <laughs> um. At what age do you think life starts giving you things? Oh, the day you're born, right? Depending on who you are. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean yeah. that's an appropriate yeah. answer. The day you're born, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got mom gives Depending. you something to eat. Yeah, yeah. Get food. some of us had more silver spoons than than others, but yeah. exactly. Yeah, although they do take away the umbilical cord. That's true, but you don't want that. <laughs> you're done with that. <laughs> uh, read read Tommy's book. Yeah, for more about the day. Yeah, I'll just say that for yeah. more about the day you're born. Read Tommy's yeah. book, everybody. In memory of plug. Todd Woods. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you I am Tom Taylor.com. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> and speaking of reading books, uh, Chris, you have written 
an amazing number of really wonderful books, like your Ordinary People series, your comic books, any, anything you'd like to talk about or share with people? Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, we're doing all those books. I've got, um, depending on when you guys come out with this one, mm-hmm. considering we we actually recorded this in 1957. Yeah, um, how did we do this? <laughs> I don't even know what this thing is. It's got buttons on it. Uh so in uh, in the in the spring, I have a book called um, "The Yawns Are Coming." Uh, it's a picture book I wrote and drew for uh, the young people in our lives, and mm. so that'll be out. And then um, starting in November 11th on PBS, I am executive producing a TV show called Xavier Riddle and the Secret Secret Museum. Wow! wow. Very oh, cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, so that's awesome. Take a look. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be taking a look for sure. Thanks. And uh, everybody else, take a look at Tom's book. <laughs> uh, I am Tom Taylor. Dot com. Yep, it'll it'll be worth your time, and you will learn about the miracle of childbirth. <laughs> and <laughs> oh after you've done that, uh, you can join us back here Wednesday for minute twenty nine of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull here on the Indiana Jones Minute. Brando. <laughs> I just want to say, Pete, we, we, we won't get into this, but I really liked how you brought about like searching for an identity. Yeah, I haven't found mine, so we'll just, we'll I'm trying to, right try to get some <laughs> ideas. You would make an excellent teenager. Would this would work on me? <laughs> yeah. You guys think I could pull off that hat? That's some bad hat. It's a look. <laughs>